to master. This is a quick introduction to the software to uh, show off the capabilities. Um, here we've got the main window of Modbus RTU master. And uh, on the first startup, you'll be seeing a information window. Um, that information window will have a, it's got a link in it, which is going to link you back to this video or any other future information that might be relevant. Um, that information window only comes up on the first startup. Um, if you want to see that again uh, after that, uh, you can go to information under the view window and that will bring that window back. For the time being, we won't need that window. So let's just have a look at the um, preferences section of um, Modbus RTU Master. Um, we can configure our Modbus uh, timeout. So this is a reply timeout uh, when the master sends information, requests information from the slave. Um, it will time out if it doesn't have, re if it hasn't received a reply after the time stated in here, uh, but it will do some retries um, here at the moment. We've got that set to a maximum number of two retries. Um, so it'll try once and if it gets no reply, it'll try another two times before it says that connection is not working. Um, then we've also got the uh, serial interface tab. Serial interface tab is where you select your interface that you are using. Um, the board right and the various other parameters. Um, you've got the ability to turn flow control on various options of flow control. <clears throat> um, normally, uh, they are not used uh, for most applications. All right, um, that's the preferences. Um, now, what we see um, here is a register title or name and uh, the data in that register. Uh, all that comes from a read-write definition. Now, the read-write definition we can uh, get by double-clicking on uh, the status. This is the status line here, double-clicking on the status line, and we can define uh, our Modbus read information. So at the moment, um, we've got a number of different uh, Modbus functions. If you want to read from the holding registers, for example, um, we've got the ability to um, define which address, the start address, and how many Modbus registers we want to read from. Modbus registers are always 16-bit, um, so here we define how many 16-bit registers we want to read. The first one will read from the address one. Uh, we've got the ability to view these addresses in hexadecimal. You can see uh, that turns into hexadecimal or into decimal. Um, we've also got um, the ability here to um, select whether we want to see the address of the uh, that we've defined in the cells. This is what we call the cell here, the data cell. Um, you can click that on and you'll see the address in there. Um, you can see what whether you want to see the PLC address. We call this the PLC address. So this is the raw address. This is the actual PLC address um, according to Modicon standards. And you will find as we change the function, um, that address here actually changes. So those of you that are familiar with Modicon PLCs, uh, they'll, they'll see that. Um, now we've also got the ability to um, disable on an error so that um, it disables itself when when it can't read. Um, we can hide the title column, which is this column here. We can show the PLC address um, and we can show the address in the cell. But that's a very basic definition. Um, we're using, we're talking to Modbus slave number one. So that's the, the slave that we are that we are addressing, that we're sending information to. Down here, we can actually see uh, the bytes that are being sent to the Modbus slave. So if you are familiar with the Modbus protocol, you can see uh, that's the slave, uh, that's the function, the Modbus function, uh, that's the starting address, that's the register quantity, and that's a checksum. So you can see that, and as you're changing um, what, you, what you enter in here, you can see the change down here happening as well. 
All right, if we, if we set that to three registers and um, we click address in cell, for example, and we click the OK button, we can see that has changed. This is our address, which is now showing in the cell. And just for a bit of a comparison, we'll go back and make it the PLC address. So now we're seeing the PLC address in the cell and you can change that, turn that on and off. Um, the title column or the register name, you can change that. Um, that's editable, so you can call that one register one. Um, you can call this one here flow value um, and um, anything anything you like. So these are freely definable. Um, once you've got all that defined, that definition is done, you've got the ability to save that. So you can go to File, Save, and the usual procedure uh, to save that particular setup. Now, a little bit about the screen elements on here. Um, we have got a Start button. We have got a Stop button currently disabled, and we have got a Single button. The Start button, and we've got the status line here. So just a quick explanation on the status line. Uh, that's a transmit counter. That's an error counter. That's the ID, the slave ID. That's the Modbus function. And that's the scan rate. So let's just have another look at the scan rate that we've got in here. Uh, we've got a scan rate that we can define. So um, when we hit the start button, a Modbus RTU master will send the request um, to the slave and it will keep sending that request every 1000 milliseconds in our case, or if you want to slow that down to say every 3000 milliseconds. Um, so now every 3000 milliseconds, every three seconds, the request is being sent to the slave and we're expecting a reply to come from the slave. So we've got the ability to start the scan. And once the scan is started, we've got the ability to stop the scan We've also got a uh, function here that allows us to make a single operation. So that means instead of using the scan rate and keep scanning it, we only do a single request, single read write, write operation. So the operation, which is defined here, is going to carry, be carried out once by this or consecutively with that time in between um, by, uh, by that button up here. Furthermore, we have got an indicator here which tells us um, what the reply is, um, what reply we've received and if we have received the reply. So let's just try that out and see what happens when we click on scan here. Um, and you can see there's some values that are coming through every three seconds. You'll notice there's a, a, a progress indicator that pops up. So that progress indicator pops up just after we have sent to the slave. And you can see every time we're sending, the transmit count goes up. Um, and that progress indicator will be there, will be showing until we've received a reply. A successful reply will give us an indication here of a green. Uh, an unsuccessful reply will indicate red. And of course, you can see in here uh, what we've got, um, the, the, the results of uh, what we're receiving back um, from our um, slave. Now, <clears throat> the information that we are receiving back, we'll just hit the stop button on that. The information we are receiving back um, can be read in this case as a, a one register decimal, but we've got many other ways of configuring it. In order to do that, we just do an option or a right click. And in that right click, we can see the display format. Um, and there's a number of display formats available. We can also see that we have the option of um, reading or interpreting 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits. In this case, 64 is grayed out because we've only got um, three 16-bit registers established in here. So there's there's not a title of 64 bits in here. Um, but yeah, we can, for example, we can set that to use um, 32 bits. And then you've noted, you can notice that what you see in this line now 
um, is actually made up out of the contents of those two 16-bit registers. And you can see these two carrots here, they're pointing towards uh, that, telling you that that value from this register is actually used to interpret what's shown in here. Um, for a bit more of a demonstration of that, um, I've got a demonstration file prepared, um, which is in here. So here's a demonstration file, which shows a number of those options, um, number of interpretations. For example, here we've got an ESCII interpretation, um, and I'll just make sure that we've got all that updated. There's an ESCII interpretation of uh, one register and then two registers together. Um, here we have got a signed and an unsigned interpretation of a register, so the difference uh, between the two. Um, and we can uh, we can take that, we can change it to um, hexadecimal and then we can see what that looks like in hexadecimal. Um, or we can switch it back to decimal and decimal by nature is a signed decimal. Um, so we've got all these options by naturally a float value takes 32 bits. So it takes two registers into account um, that, uh, that we're using here. So that's pretty much um, what we can do just for a little demonstration. Um, I'm just going to make the slave not respond. So when we do that, so now the slave is not responding. You can see the progress indicator um, stays on and um, it eventually comes back red. So progress indicator and it comes back red. And the error count, of course, is going up. So now we can see every time we do a transmit, for each transmit, the error count goes up as well. So that's what happens when uh, when there's no response or when there's some sort of uh, error response or faulty response um, from, um, uh, from the slave. Uh, now we've turned the slave back on to work again correctly and everything is right. Okay, that's pretty much the operation of uh, Modbus RTU Master. Um, just uh, for the uh, sake of um, um, completeness, I would like to show you um, the um, serial converter uh, that I'm using. I have found the serial converters which I've purchased from this website here um, seem to be very reliable. Uh, they also come in 232 and RS485 and RS422 formats. Um, and they've been giving um, great service for a very long time. So if you're looking for, and uh, there's no commercial link between um, us and uh, and that site. So um, I'll purely uh, promote them because they are good and they work and they do the typical industrial RS485 and RS422 um, um, interface um, specifications. All right, that's uh, that's it for Modbus Master, Modbus RTU Master. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, email us. Or if you have any improvement suggestions, um, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to uh, um, to put them into the system uh, as this software is being developed. So, thank you for watching.